vampire. Burns, burns, burns the ring of fire. What's up guys, today we have a very special video and that is no exaggeration because I'm working out with the strongest power lifter of all time. Both with wraps and without wraps, Dan Bell. Now I interviewed him on my channel before, but now we're getting a session in person and this is probably the only 4K footage that will exist, <laughs> that has existed, of Dan Bell. I, I would be willing to bet. Um, and it's awesome that ever since our interview, he has basically taken off even more because actually, when I first interviewed him, he had the raw without wraps and raw with wraps world record, but then someone took his uh, with wraps world record and by the time I even published the video. The strongest man in the Czech Republic, over a 2,500 pound total with wraps, the most formidable opponent. And I was kind of like, okay, well, that was just kind of an error. And then he took it back and crushed it. So now he's crushing it even more. He squatted 505 kilograms with wraps uh, after that interview. 1,113 pounds, Dan Bell's third attempt squat. And he's just doing an awesome job. So I'm, I feel almost like a vice reporter going into the hood. You got no wire, none of them. I mean, I do have a... I do have a wire, but it's a microphone, so it gives yeah, no badge in your pocket. Being like the little dweeby guy, like, hey, what kind of weights are you lifted here? But uh, no, Dan actually is a really good guy. We get along, I think, better than people would expect. We have a lot more in common. But let's get to the Like a master one. Do you know exactly how thick this is? I think it's 30. 30? 30? 30? 30? Uh, no, no, it's a 62 pounds, 62 and a half pounds. Damn, 62 and a half pounds, 30, and it's a little bit, a little bit longer. Yeah. And in a mono lift, we'll see what's up. <laughs> I'll go no walkout. Finally got Johnny in a mono. <laughs> All right, using a mono lift for the first time, and I have to say, I enjoyed it. I already want to switch to it. It was not that difficult at all to learn, and the only thing that was difficult was learning how to use it for Dan because it kept bouncing and I was just terrified that it would bounce and then he would rack the six plates, miss it, and then, uh, yeah, that would be, uh, whatever would happen after that would be scary. Especially, I don't know if a, a angry Dan would be something I'd even want to imagine. But as you guys can tell, I'm lifting here with the strongest power lifter alive. Now, Dan has established himself as that before our interview. But after our interview, as I alluded to in the intro, you, he's leveled up. But I can't emphasize enough the timetable here, is that he actually totaled 2,600 after the interview, and then he squatted that 505 kilograms two months after that meet. So we're talking multiple meets of all-time world records. Of, he squatted 500 kilograms for the first time ever after the interview, and then did the 505. <laughs> so it's just back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back competitions. He has actually squatted over a thousand pounds, nine straight full meets. He only had one meet where he did token totals. And he's also the only powerlifter ever to squat a thousand pounds, bench 600 pounds, and deadlift 900 pounds. Petrus, who I alluded to in the intro, he actually is only 19 pounds away from it, but his deadlift just isn't quite up to Dan's. So this brings me to an interesting intersection. I have always considered Ray Williams to be the greatest powerlifter of all time. Ray's falling off. And I don't say that gleefully at all. I am a huge Ray fan and I always will be. And I think anybody can turn anything around. But he's had multiple bad meets and Dan has had the exact opposite. So this is one of those moments where I do have to consider the fact that you know, Dan may be the greatest power of all time. Even though I do think drug testing matters. I know drug tested doesn't mean drug free. I hear that all the time. I think it matters that Ray's drug tested. But what Dan does that separates himself is he improves on all three lifts evenly and he doesn't get hurt. Powerlifting success is that simple. For the people, is how did you come to your narrow stance? Oh, did just what's comfortable. I, I did everything. I went from even closer to even farther out, and I found what was comfortable. I didn't even know I needed only shoes until I tried that with the five pound plates. Yeah. Did it, did it for a couple weeks, felt great. So you did squat wider at some point? Yeah, of course, yeah. And now when I, when I do put gear on, or like briefs or anything like that, yeah. it's super wide, because that's what works for me and my hip mobility. Yeah. Yeah. So do you do you think that helps when it comes to your durability? Because you're really one of the longest lasting at this point at the top of the top. And do you think 
do you think that has to do with your durability? The fact that you have such a quad dominant squat that you really don't see yeah. with other super heavies. Like you typically see guys really rely on their hips and then kind of have a banged up back or hips. Right. Whereas you've never had a quad injury or anything you know, like that, right? I've been super lucky, knock on wood, that I've had, I've had a little IT issue every once in a while. But yeah. other than that, no, I've been pretty damn lucky. Yeah, I do think it has a lot to do with my durability. Yeah. Get that, you just jam packing down as hard as you can and hope yeah. you get back up. <laughs> yeah, because it reminds me, it reminds me somewhat, you know, of Shane Hammond, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me somewhat of that, and he never got hurt, I don't think, really right. squatting, and he, he would dive bomb that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't totally dive bomb, so have you have you ever tried that? Yeah, I did, well, like way back in the day, and now I feel like I get more out of my hamstrings if I slow it down. Yeah. And I finally can use the caps that I have, which yeah. nobody else has. Eight place. Yeah, so what could you front squat, you think, if you push it? Put it put it on YouTube. Put a put a promise on it. Oh, there's no, no doubt I can get 8,800 front squat. No doubt. But like, yeah, that'd be I crazy. know it takes time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you said you might pursue strongman stuff or other things oh, down the road. Yeah. Sleeve meet in November I'm going to do. And then probably be done with that and just move more into the strongman stuff. Yeah, so what specifically is the goal for that sleeved meet this year? Was it 25? Yeah, the 25. Yeah, because you got your you got your wraps total goal yeah. completely, right? Yeah. So are you done competing in wraps? I think there's a possibility of one getting drawn together in February next year just to put okay. the prize money because uh, inevitably that's what it's going to take now. It's like how much money can I make doing it? Just yeah. put my body through that torture. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right, so this is how much weight is this? Uh, seven ninety seven. Er, yeah, seven ninety seven. Seven ninety. Yeah, do you want do you want to put some do you want to put two and a halfs on it to make it official? <laughs> hey, we we gotta do things technically correct. Fuck. Let's go. Let's get it. There you go, let's go. Good. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Dan is planning to compete specifically on November 6th in Canton, Ohio. Now the exciting news is I will be able to be there. So I'll be able to see hopefully a 2,500 pound total the first time ever without wraps. I don't want to put, uh, you know, I don't want to jinx it by saying it's going to happen. You know, I don't want to do what I did to Sean at nationals. But what I'm planning to do is to get the best quality footage ever of it. I, I have an idea that's going to up the quality to where it really will be something that nobody's ever done in YouTube fitness. But we'll see. I'll keep that locked away. As far as my own training as well, I will have some updates on my physique, actually, the next video. So when I compete depends entirely on when I can get to 178. I want to compete with a water cut to 175 and in a monolift. Dan has inspired me. I want to go to monolift, maybe even with wraps. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but doesn't Dan's stance look far narrower in my video here? And in, in just in real life, it looked really narrow. Whereas in meets, you know, it definitely looks narrow, but it never struck me as much. It looks like full on uh, a very large Brett Gibbs. <laughs> so not at all like Brett Gibbs, you know, he's like 5'3". But anyways, so lat pull-ins, lat activation, a little bit better than even pull-downs. If you don't do these at all, I highly recommend two sets to 15 to 25 reps, doing that at least, and then building up potentially from there. What this does is it aligns the angle of resistance better with the direction of the lat muscle fibers. So that's a clear benefit, very strict form is key unlike the curls where I have looser form, because even cheat curls ultimately don't change the function trained. Overall, it was an honor to train with Dan, and I would love to collab every time someone breaks his record or comes close to it. We collab as he gets on that journey to retake it back. It was really awesome to just train with someone who's been there, seen that, and even told me a, a few fantastic stories. Is One is his last meet, Nick Best, who's a very seasoned strongman and an amazing lifter, tore his lat which was a pretty gruesome injury. Come on, all the way, all the way. And Nick Best still took the time to help patch together Dan Bell's hands because he tore a callus. So with that torn lat, he still did everything to help Dan to try to get him to hit his last deadlift. So that just shows you what type of community your powerlifting is. 
And it was also interesting to talk to him about monoliths, things like that, where I think actually both of us agree that a monolift actually does make sense. It's worse for the viewing experience, but you guys see at IPF Worlds how much of a mess it is. Oh Whoa, my God. Oh my no! God, I don't want to watch it. What happened there? That's an. Oh, oh well, he's on his knees oh now. My God. Without further ado, make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and maybe see some Dan in the future. And that's it. Peace. This video is sponsored by Jack Factory. If you need protein, pre workout, or creatine, any one of those three fundamentals, links are in the description. I highly recommend it, and of course, it helps support the channel. Yo, Dan is so nice that I said I needed to get my dog some food before I go to the gym, and he brought this to the gym. And my dog's tiny, so this is like about a year's worth of food.